Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco if you are here for a special, very, very special edition of the show. I've got Kevin Zraeli here. He, we're down here in Houston doing a Brunello di Montalcino. Yeah, they actually said D. D, yes. Make sure you say the D Montalcino. And as viewers of my show know that even though I might be Italian heritage, my Italian isn't the best. Um, but uh, so we're here for a Brunello tasting, like so it's easy to say, right? Right, it is. <laughs> it's easy to say. Um, and uh, it's been great. Uh, we did a couple seminars, got some tasting going outside, uh, and decided on some, some wines from uh, the day that I thought were really, really nice wines, and uh, we're going to go through those. But before we go on, uh, Kevin, why don't you kind of tell us who you are, how you got into all this, and we'll, we'll go from there. You want the truth? Or the, well, or yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, there's all different stories I can give you, I mean, but they are actually are all true. Uh, but um, or are they based on a true story? Yeah, they're all based on a true okay. story. But um, I, I think that to bring it up to reality, to uh, you know, um, what do they call that? Real time. Real time. Yeah. Uh, real time. I, I started studying wines when I was 19. Uh, I started teaching wines when I was 20. Uh, I had actually accredited course in the state university system that I taught as a junior for seniors. Uh, I worked in a restaurant at that time. That's how this all happened. Okay. And then I, I traveled as much as I possibly could through Europe and California and New York State, which is where I'm from. I got a job at Windows on the World Restaurant, which was the restaurant on top of One World Trade Center that opened in 1976, and I was just turned 25, and I got this job of running this whole wine department. Um, and Windows on the World, I stayed there for 25 years uh, from 1976. It opened in April of 1976. Unfortunately, uh, uh, September 11th um, sort of ended those days of right. Windows on the World, and um, and uh, I had a wine school, well, uh, and the wine school also started in 1976. But the wine school still continues, and it is still called the Windows on the World Wine School. Um, and then I also wrote a book, which is called the Windows in the World Complete Wine Course. So what I'm saying about uh, you know September 11th uh, as a difficult day it was, as it was for me and you and everybody, all, all the people that are, are watching. Uh, there's a legacy that still mm -hmm. continues on. The the book continues the legacy. The wine school continues the legacy. Traveling to Houston, you know, being here, tasting some great wines, uh, you know, life is still good. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I was telling you before we start recording, you know, uh, being uh, from New Jersey, I was able to visit uh, New York several times. Uh, I fortunately was never able to visit the the restaurant itself, but I did go to the World Trade Center. We just didn't eat the restaurant that day. Um, but uh, uh, and also reading your book and telling you, you know, my father, you know, he, I told him about this. Yeah, there was some restaurant at the World Trade Center, and he, he was like, oh yeah, I know of it. So, um, and having your book was one of the one of the first books I that got me into this whole thing about wine, and uh, I think it was it's a great book. And of course, I forgot to bring my copy. Uh, it's okay, <laughs> we, but but you have several editions, right? Yes, actually, I, I think the um, uh, it's it. If people, there's plenty of good books out there, by the way, and I hope that you get a book uh, on wine. Um, mine is maybe what would be called the simple guide to wine. I grew up in a town um, in New York, outside of New York City, called Pleasantville. And if anybody uh, knows Reader's Digest, mm -hmm. you know the condensed version. And I learned from that um, that make things simple. You know, it, it gets to be too much writing, too many words. So my book is actually the simple guide to understanding wines. And I, I really think so because when I when I first started, you know, someone who, the person who got me into this, um, your your book was one of the suggestions among others, and I really felt it's a great introduction to get you, get your feet wet and really get get your get the palate going, mm -hmm. get the juices flowing to, to really get that interest in wine, uh, and I refer back to it still because I think it's got some great information Thanks. to it, you know, and. Um, and it, it's, it's a book I recommend to people that are wanting to get into wine and they'll ask me, what should I get? Well, right. instead of like, going, well, we'll go hit all the encyclopedias and the Bibles mm -hmm. first, let's, let's start something that, that, that they can wrap their head around. You that, know? that was my problem. 
Yeah. When I was 19 years old, I mean, you don't even know why I was into wine, but <laughs> it, my parents wanted to know why I was into wine. But uh, in those days, you could actually drink in New York at 18. But I had nothing that I could use. Uh, there was no, uh, they were all encyclopedic in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no simple guide. And so basically the niche was there. And I say this, and this is very important that you all understand this out there, um, uh, that um, I'm a New Yorker. Uh, I'm an American. Right. I'm from New York, outside of New York City, not New York City. I lived in New York City for many years, but I was out in the country area, really. 30 miles outside of New York City in those days was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. really country. Uh, and I studied wine, and that book that we're talking about, The Windows of the World Complete Wine Course, is now the number one selling wine book in the world. We've uh, sold four million copies, and it's in, you know, all these different languages. Uh, and so that to me, uh, you know, when you think of wine, you don't think of a, an American as being involved in wine. You think of, right. a, first you think of French. Yes. Uh, and now I shouldn't say that in front of my Brunello friends here right now. <laughs> Maybe you think of French or you think of Italian, but you don't think of American. So uh, I'm sort of proud uh, at being an American that I was able to get this information together and get, the in, and get it out in a book form. Awesome, yeah. And, and obviously, you just if you're looking for a book, uh, especially if you're starting out, but even if, you, even if you, for some reason, have skipped the book, you should get it. Because, I mean, I think it's a great book. Absolutely. Um, so we are doing Brunello. And uh, we have about 30 producers here mm -hmm. in Houston doing yes. this. And uh, you, were ta you were talking about how you've, you've got the event here in Houston, and right. then you have an event you're doing in New York. Correct. Um, Brunello, um, uh, at this time of the year, l let, let's back up a little bit, all right? Okay. So, that, I mean, so people understand, here we're Brunello, the Montalcino, what is it? Right. A and uh, first of all, it's from Italy. Second of all, it's from the region of Tuscany. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and, and, uh, Montalcino is the name of the village, which is actually on top of a hill. It's on right. a mountain on top of a hill, and the vineyards surround it. And the grape is called San Giovese, but actually it's called Brunello in this particular uh, region. Of, of Tuscany, so Brunello de Montalcino, Brunello, the great Brunello of Montalcino, uh, and um, I am saying this uh, from my heart, and this is very important because I, I am actually a, um, how do I look at myself, as a general practitioner of wine. Right, yeah. I am not a um, surgeon, I'm not an expert in wine, but I know a little bit about everything, uh, and, and for my own taste, Brunello de Montalcino is one of the best wines in the world. I'm going to put it in the top three. Top three wines in the world. Why? Because it's elegant, it's soft, uh, it's great with food. You can drink it young. It can also age. There's so many reasons why. Uh, and it's also, as you said, easy to say. Yeah. Walk into store sounding like that, but Brunello. Uh, uh, and if you want to go Brunello di Montalcino, you can do that. Right. And uh, as I was telling you, this is really my first experience with this much Brunello. I've had, I've had a Brunello here and there before. Um, and, and I've, I've, I've liked it, but I've never had it like this. So this has been, for me, a really eye-opening experience and something that, that now I've, I wouldn't say maybe I'm a convert, but, I, but I'm uh, maybe a, a standard bearer. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I've fallen in love with the wine. You know, it's uh, easy to fall in love with. Yeah. I think that's that, that whole thing about being accessible. Yes. And we have some of these wines you know, that are maybe too stringent mm -hmm. in our mouth. But the fruit, these are all wines that are fruit friendly. Right. Uh, and you know, these people are from, the, they're from, the, all the outside, unfortunately you can't be here. <laughs> and as you said, Mark, there's 30 different producers out here. So they came all the way in yes. from Montalcino to Houston. And they brought not only, this is very important because this is the what, what, tour of our wines today that we're going to taste uh, are from the 2008 vintage. But the primary reason is to show the 2008 vintage. And Brunello is one of the very few places uh, in the world, Italy and Spain, uh, are the two places in the world where they require a aging. So these wines are now being just released. This is the first release of the 2008. So it took them five years to get the wine, so they've right. already aged it a little bit for you. Uh, and then I think they were very, very generous uh, in, in some older wines that they took out of their oh, cellars. Yeah. Uh, we tasted back to we tasted back to 1990 today. Yes. Uh, and uh, it was just spectacular to see that the wine could age and also see the younger wines of 2008 and, and where they can go. And that was something that, you know, I've, I've done some vertical, well, I guess verticals, whatever. I've done older wines and verticals. And, and one of the things we did remark about in the seminar was the color on yes. some of these, you know, the, the, even the wine from 1990. Um, you know, it, it, there, had, there was a little bit of color, you know, color difference. You could tell it was an older wine, but, you know, if I was sitting there doing my blind tasting, I, uh, okay, maybe it's seven years, eight years, ten years old, but not 20 two years, right. you know, I don't think I would have ever 
Um, I don't think I would have ever pegged it, and I don't know if any of those any of the higher up sommeliers would have been able to like, oh well, it's obviously older. I don't know. I mean, it, it all those wines, the color looked great. Right. You know, they definitely looked you know uh, much younger than than they were. So uh, there's another important point, especially if, if you're at home and you're putting some of these wines away, don't put them, don't leave them in the kitchen countertop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, find a place. Uh, it gets a little warm down here in Houston. Yeah, just a little. <clears throat> uh, and and I don't know about cellars and stuff <laughs> like that, but you have to protect your investment. This is th this is one of the great wines of the world. So uh, it when I say protect your investment, if you're going to spend the money to buy these wines, and, and in general we're talking about First of all, it's very. This is one of the best wines in the world. Still, most of them are going to sell on the fifty, sixty dollar range. That might sound like a lot of money, but in essence, compared to some of the other great wines in the world, it's it's nothing. Right. Uh, and you're going to get the best. Mm -hmm. Then what you do need is a fifty-five degree temperature, and right. if it's possible, a seventy-five percent humidity. You need to have these things to keep these wines so that they, they will not prematurely age. Right. And then. Uh, we were talking about the price points here, but even like the Rosos. Well, this is know. important. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> because uh, this one is called Brunello de Matocino. Yes, $50, 60 $75. That's expensive. They make another wine, which is called Rosso de Matocino, R-O-S-S-O. -S -S -O. And Rosso also is made with the Brunello or the Sangiovese grape variety, 20 bucks, 18 mm -hmm. bucks a bottle. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to get the, the, not the full impact, but it's one of the best values in all of the wine world, not just the Italian or the Tuscan wine world, but in right. all of wine world, Rosso de Montalcino. Yeah, and, and I've had, in, of course, back here, they've got not just the Brunellos, they've got the Rosos. And I, I can tell you, I found some of those Rosos really great, you know. Uh, I was very impressed with them, very surprised. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hearing, you know, and knowing, well, knowing the price point being around $20, it's absolutely great value. So and with food, yes. I think it's very, very important to understand. For example, with a Brunello, uh, as you heard me say this morning, uh, these are bigger wines. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, like uh, if you're uh, meat, yes. you, know, you eat a lot of meat down here in Texas. Oh right? yeah, we love our cows. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, a good a good sirloin steak mm -hmm. is what you should be looking for, or lamb, or something like that. On the Rosso de Montalcino, it's a little bit lighter in style, still got the impact, as I said, but there there comes in a night. I think about wine and food all the time because I, I I don't have wine without food. I'll taste with you right now, but I don't. Right. I'm not going to drink it because it's it, I have to have food with it. But th now you can go to a lighter style with a Rosso de Montalcino. You can go to chicken. You can go to uh, risotto. You can go to a pasta. You know, you can, you can something a little bit easier mm -hmm. uh, than uh, you know the the heavier Brunellos. Oh yeah, and uh, you know that that's something that again I, I preach that too is like you want to have your food with your wine. Um, because I mean that's that's what it's there for. It's not necessarily just there to you know drink a beer. Sure, okay, but you know it's you think about the food that you pair with these wines. Well, what do they pair in that country or where they pair in that area? Um, and and it does go hand in hand. Well, bottom line, here's here's my philosophy: wine makes a food taste better, and food makes a wine taste better. And it's funny because you know I've been coming to Houston for 30 years, and uh, you know. I, I, a little bit more beer than wine down right here, yeah okay and let's be honest <laughs> all right don't don't look at me that way uh, but now uh, it's changing I mean you know wine we are this is something I did not mention today but uh, the United States is the number one consumer of wine in the world uh, you know of all wines we're mm -hmm. the number one consumer we just we beat out Italy you know which the Italians ah, they drink wine every day but actually <laughs> right. they don't we're doing well uh, and and, and um, Houston uh, is is a big market yeah. Uh, as well as uh, you know, obviously Dallas and you know Austin and all that other. But the fact remains is, is there's a lot of good culinary things happening down here, as uh, good restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, a good and good wine stores, and stocking the right wines. Right. It's an amazing adventure, and that's what it is. Yeah. It's an adventure, and it's a journey, that is pleasure. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you work hard all day, and sit back and enjoy a good meal with a good wine. All right. So in the in the seminar, you talked about. Uh, and it, this was really great, though. That if you ever come in and you're able to do a seminar with you about tasting wine, um, mm -hmm. it, it was a, a great way to, to think about how to taste wine. Um, how long should the pleasure be? Well, <clears throat> I, I, let's put it this way. The best wine I've ever had in my life, mm -hmm. this is over 40 years right now, is a wine that uh, the balance, and this is the key element, right. the balance of the wine lasted for three minutes. Three minutes of pleasure. Uh, of all of the fruits, and this is, you gotta remember, this is natural. This is the other thing too, We're done, this, this is from grapes. 
and there's very little, if anything, added to these wines, uh, 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 and th that's only to protect them, and mm -hmm. very, very little, any other, to protect them from shipping and stuff, stuff like that. So uh, my point is, I'm looking for one minute on any wine, whether it's a $10 bottle of wine, or $100 bottle of wine, or $10,000 bottle of wine. Right. It, I gotta have one minute of really, I wanna taste the, the essence of the fruit, the essence of the soil, the essence of the winemaker, the essence of the place. Right. A sense of place is what I'm looking for. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and th that was one of the things I, I really got from that. Um, I mean, when I when I do my tastings, you know, I, maybe I've done something similar where I, I do wait, but just kind of really thinking about how long you really should be waiting. It's also, also evaluating that wine. You can't really necessarily just from that, like the, you talked about the first sip uh, of a wine, and when you said that, it just clicked. Mm -hmm. You know, the first sip out of the bottle isn't necessarily, or the first sip out of that glass isn't necessarily mm -hmm. the best thing, the way to evaluate it, you know, because it's a shock. Like you said, it's a shock to your well, system. Well, I, I tell you, and you have to go through it, uh, meaning that when you're in a restaurant, the proper procedure of, is opening a bottle. Well, let's go, let's go through that for a second, right. okay, Mark? So, uh, so the, um, uh, the waiter, first of all, brings over the wine to you, right, and says, uh, is this the wine you ordered? <laughs> okay, a little intimidation right, right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yes, maybe, no, I have seen the <laughs> label before. And then they take out the cork, okay? Right. And then they hand you the cork and they say, here. And what are you supposed to do with the cork? Well, they smell it, right? <laughs> right, and what course. does it smell like? Cork. It has wet, <laughs> whiny, smelly yeah. cork. Right. Uh, and I'm gonna say this right now, it's very important that, that the cork means nothing and it never did and it never will. Uh, just put it away, put it in your pocket. If you really wanna smell the wine, you won't smell it from the cork. Don't smell the cork. And the screw cap is even worse, don't you? Don't <laughs> like but it's in the glass already. Right. You, you know, they've already taken the cork out, put it in the glass and smell it. And sometimes, you know, it, it gets a little more intimidating because then they pour that wine and they say, okay, what do you think? What do you think of this wine? Oh, okay, you know, it's, it's fine. But that first taste, as you just mentioned, is a shock to your taste buds. It's all in the smell, though. Everything is in the smell. For example, our first wine here yeah, right now. Exactly. Um, what am I, I'm looking for fruit, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, not, I'm also looking f to see if the wine is showing any oxidation. Oxidation would be something like sherry kind of smell or Madeira kind of smell. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm, uh, this, actually, this is one of my favorite wines here. I, I, and when I, ta I pre-tasted all these wines in New York before I came out to Houston. And this wine is the wine I had with my dinner right. afterwards. Just um, concentrated, uh, extract extracted fruit and just it's it just lovely okay and actually what I do is you were talking about is the difference is I put my hand over the top right. uh, which is the first time I ever really did this I, well you know most people forget about the yeah. smell All right, let's talk about that in a second open it up you intensify the smell by at least five times but smell is the most important part because 90% of taste is smell Right. So I can tell you right now, by, if I did all three wines, I'm just going to do it because I, you know, what we're going to get is a different DNA. Uh, this might look a little silly, but you know what? Uh, you're you're in a restaurant, and hopefully the sommelier, or not even the sommelier, is even a bad word because it's not a bad word, but the wine buyer, the the wine waiter, you're going to have to deal with that. And uh, I'm uh, that's my job is to make sure you get the right wine. But what I'm getting here right now, there's like all different kinds of flavors that you, they're not put in, by the way. This is all natural, it's all coming from fermentation. You'll hear, you'll hear like we, we, saw, we saw today and smell today, red raspberries or strawberries mm. or melons or cassis, all of these different kinds of smells. And my God, aromatherapy at its best. Um, this is what you should do actually at home every day around right? four yeah. o'clock. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, but we have three different Brunellos. Of course, these are from 2008. This has got four more years of age on it, but they're um, different. And that's the great thing about wine. Uh, unfortunately, when you walk into a store, you might be 6,000 SKUs and what do you do? Find the right retailer. Mm -hmm. That's the best advice I can get. Find the right retailer who understands your sense of taste and your pocketbook. Hey, if you want to spend 10 bucks, let that person find the wine for 10 bucks. Um, my recommendation, by the way, with so many wines on the marketplace, is the best price value right now is 15 to 20. Okay, under 10, I get a little nervous. 10 to 15, I'm gonna get hit, I'm gonna hit and miss. Right. 15 to 20 dollars is, and if you can even go to the 25 dollar range, which again we're in the Rosso, right, uh, the Montalcino, uh, unbelievable wines that are out there that have such fantastic taste. Yes, and will give you pleasure. 
So I don't know if you want to give this wine a try. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, again, this is the 2008. This is the one that was just released. Uh, what, now, you said you like this wine. Uh, you, we, we had it this morning. Right. It's almost got like a little baked smell. Um, it really does. and I Almost, almost a barbecue, like, by the way. Yeah, like it, bacon and barbecue. Yeah, meaty. And, yeah, meaty, yes. Yeah. And I, I remember this is what I liked about this wine mm. from so this I, morning. Yeah, I'm always wondering about you know people looking at this show and saying, what are these guys? What, who are these two jerks here? But you know what? Um, everything's got a, sm a smell. And, 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 and the most important part of your brain is the limbic system. And the limbic right. system is all part of memory and pleasure. And it's the oldest part of the brain. And people can actually do this. They can actually go back and smell the wine and say, ah, oh, that reminds me, uh, when I say meaty, it's like a, it's like a barbecued steak. Mm -hmm. And you know what that smell is. Or if you walk into the kitchen and you smell somebody cooking garlic or onions, you know what they're cooking. My job, your job as, as, a, as a wine uh, guy, guy is yeah. to, you know, is, is this gonna, is this a wine that I'm gonna like? And so I'm gonna taste it, this way, but I'm gonna show you how I taste. Because as, as Mark said, first taste of wine is a shock to your taste buds. So we always toast, by the way, because uh, of the evil spirits uh, in Texas. You know, somewhere, yeah. Somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> I've got my, got my evil eye protection. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have it. <laughs> and you know, and again, it should not have become, been called wine tasting. It should mm -hmm. be called wine smelling. Because I'm keeping the wine in my mouth for like three to five seconds, and then I get also the old, the olfactory kicks in. Not just you don't just smell it through the nose. You have the um, <coughs> your your nasal passage, which is back in here, which is going to go back to the limbic system as well. Now that was I got to be honest with you. Uh, my last seminar was hours ago, and so this is my first taste, and it doesn't have the same flavor. So that's again the shock, right. uh, and it's <laughs> and also if you just had a vinaigrette salad. Right. Or if you smoked a cigar, which you shouldn't be doing, uh, you're going to be bringing that into the wine. Right. So keep that in mind. Uh, so I'm going to try it one more time, but here's what I'm going to do. This time I'm going to leave the wine in my mouth for three seconds. Now I'm going to get more flavor here. I'm going to stop it from going anywhere else, and it's, then it's going to go up through the nasal passes. Let's toast again. All right. Toast again. I know this is a tough job. I right? know. But someone's got to do it, right? right? So give it a tr leave it in your mouth for three seconds. Now what Mark is doing, I can hear it, I don't know if you can hear him, but he's actually, it sounds like it's, you know, a silly thing, slurping. He's actually bringing it in, air in, which, if you will, is the chimney. You're pushing it up the chimney. You're giving it more. I sometimes do it that way, or sometimes I just swirl it around my mouth mm -hmm. and create waves. Right. And those waves create fumes. Those fumes in my world, in these wines, are called aroma. It's very, very simple. So now, I, the second taste of this wine is, is actually almost totally different. Right. Uh, a different texture. I get much more fruit. And again, that's what I'm looking for. As I said before, that's the number one thing is going to be fruit. By the way, you can only taste four things in life. <clears throat> Sweet, sour, bitter, and salt. There's no salt in wine. Bitterness is going to come from high alcohol and high tannin. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're not going to get it in these right. wines. Brunello de Montalcino, Rosso de Montalcino do not have high alcohols. And they don't have that Tannin is um, a natural preservative. It comes from the skins, the stems, the pits. If you age a wine in oak, you extract tannin. It's the same thing that's in tea. It's the same thing that's in walnuts. Um, and, and you know how your mouth can get a little dry? Right, right. So, but sweet, sour, bitter, salt. There's no salt in wine. There's no bitterness in this wine. There's no sweetness in this wine. All right. the sugar has been fermented out. So all you're really left with in taste is acid. Right. Or acid, sour, and tart. Same word, AKA. It's on the side here. And, um, but you can smell the fruit. And you can smell uh, all of the other uh, components of the wine. So that's why smell is so important. Now, what did you think of this wine? You liked it before? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it before. And the, the, I still get the meatiness uh, out of it. Uh, I still get that cherry. And one of the things like I do with tasting wine, besides, you know, bringing in the air, is that as I'm thinking about it, I am breathing out through my nose so that I'm getting all that back out because like you said it is all about your smell mm -hmm. you know because if you just sit there and just drink it and go okay it's sour it's bitter or whatever but yeah using using while I exhale to exhale out through my nose so I'm right. getting all that listen Mark wants to get it all okay he wants uh, uh, show me the money okay is what he's saying <laughs> show me the wine and I, and I said I, I know that sometimes it looks silly but I taste 6,000 wines a year 
and uh, I have to rate these wines, and I have to give recommendations about these wines, and I got to be on my game. Uh, right. And you know, uh, another thing, um, actually, we didn't talk about this today, but to me, I do uh, 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 an anal analogy, if you will, a comparison of skim milk, whole milk, and heavy cream. Yes. Uh, and I take the three major red grapes, since we're doing red wine here right now. Uh, the three major red grapes in the world, by the way, Sangiovese is not one of them. Brunello is not one of them, but hear me out on this because it's not, this is, this is a Tuscan grape. Mm -hmm. It was originated in Tuscany. It's, it's the best, nowhere else in the world can they produce this kind of wine. But Pinot Noir is produced around the world. Merlot is produced around the world. And Cabernet Sauvignon is produced around the world. So those three global wines. But Pinot Noir is skim milk, texture. Right. Merlot is whole milk, and Cabernet Sauvignon is heavy cream. Now, why do I bring this up? Because all those people out there that are cooking, mm -hmm. and I say this to all of you people who love and have the passion for cooking and spend six, eight hours in that kitchen, and then you make a big mistake. You allow someone else, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, to put it up to your dish, this thing you created, the final ingredient. And what's the final ingredient? The wine. Yes. And that wine could change the taste of the food. Mm -hmm. So when I say skim milk, whole milk, and heavy cream, I'll do that one more time. Pinot Noir, Merlot, and Cabernet. Where does Sangiovese fit in? Or Brunello? It fits in a little bit between Pinot Noir and Merlot. So it's sort of light to medium in style. Why do I bring this up? Food. Food has texture. So is there a difference in fish, for example, between Dover Sole in texture and tuna steak? Yeah, of course there is. Let's talk about uh, meat dishes. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in texture between, um, say, uh, a, a veal scallopini and a veal chop? Right. Uh, even in a filet mignon versus a sirloin, there's a different texture. So, when you're trying to combine wine and food, it, there's no rules. There's no rules whatsoever. It's whatever your taste dictates, or your spouse, or your whoever you're having dinner with. But I start with that rule: texture first. So this is a medium style wine. This would be great with. Uh, uh, I, again, like a little, um, I, I'm looking at uh, veal. This is big enough for like a veal chop right, type yeah. of thing. It's got enough meatiness to it. Uh, and possibly even sometimes a cream sauce. And the cream sauce mm -hmm. cuts the acids that you get sometimes in the wines. Acid is positive, by the way. Right. Acid is a natural uh, uh, preservative as well, as is tannin, and comes from God. <laughs> yeah. As and all the stuff does come from God somehow. I think one of the things that you really pointed out today is 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 the acid, and I think at least for me, it doesn't seem like we talk about acid with red wine as much as we do with white wines, mm -hmm. you know. But it's still a very important uh, component to that. And like you said, the acid is that preservative, right. especially with these wines having a lower tannin. That's what's keeping these, especially those older wines. Right. That's what's keeping these those wines uh, tasting really mm -hmm. tasting fresh, right? Well, first well, fresh, but tasting tasting well, keeping uh, yeah. that they can age. Yes. Well. You know, these are different components, and it's like components of anything that you're cooking up recipes. You're putting in this, you're putting in that, you're putting in this. And so the components in wine, I want to go over it one more time. Sweetness on your tongue. It's right here. Mm -hmm. Sorry to do that to the audience. <laughs> fruit is, again, you don't taste fruit. It's going to be all the smell of fruit coming through. Acidity, sour, and tartness is on the side. And tannins, those tannins I was talking about that are in tea and walnuts, I, I, down the middle. And if there's a lot of tannin, it goes all over your mouth. And that's how I make a judgment of whether the wine is drinkable or not. Now, is does the tannin overpower the fruit by 60 seconds? And if it does, I say the wine's not ready to drink. That's in red wines. Right. White wines are much easier in a lot of ways to drink, uh, but uh, red wines are a little bit more complicated, and that's what people want, though. They're all drinking red wines. Mm -hmm. So let's see what, you, what goes on for the second one. Yes, so this was the... I forgot what this was, the Capana. This is the one that you liked. Yes. Right. And so what we have here, again, uh, these are all 100% Sangiovese, or in Tuscany, it's called Brunello. Um, the most important thing I'm getting here uh, is, the, is the fruit coming through. And, and most of these Brunellos, what I would call red fruits, red fruits, red raspberries, red strawberries, versus blackberry or black raspberry. I'm getting red fruits versus dark fruits. That's right. not what it comes out to be. I'm also getting, this is going to sound a little silly, but this is 
I keep saying that. I, I wonder why am I in this profession? Everything sounds silly because <laughs> I think people do look at both of us and say, "What are yeah, they doing?" Yeah, I know. How could they have a show that talks about wine tasting? Okay, I mean, uh, but in the end, um, it all works out better for you. So, this wine here uh, seems to have a little bit more power to it. It's a little bit more powerful. It uh, could be the alcohol. Alcohol gives the more alcohol you have, the more powerful the wine's going to be. But oh, got a toast, man! Don't there forget to toast. Always toast somebody and look them in the eye when you toast. Right. Them. Okay. One more time. All right. Good. There you go. There we go. I make uh, my students not talk for 60 seconds. Um, that's a minimum amount of time. And I, I, you, it, when it, by the way, you don't need to do this with your everyday wine. This is, not, this is not an exercise that is going to be helpful to anybody. There are quaffing wines, mm -hmm. and they're fun. Just Nothing like wrong the, with them, yeah. Well, you know, we got, there was a wine called Two Buck Chuck, yeah. uh, which is $1.99. And I could see, especially guys, don't get yeah. me I'm, <laughs> right? Guys going into the store, and they see they've been drinking beer, and all of a sudden they see Two Buck Chuck, mm -hmm. and they can get a whole bottle of wine for $1.99. Well, yeah. $1.99, yeah. It's gone up, by the way, <laughs> over the years, but not, still not too bad, $2.49 or something. Or a six pack of beer. Mm -hmm. A whole bottle of wine, six pack. I'll try the wine and see how that works out. And um, so don't, you don't have to do that. You know? and, and again, most wines, uh, this is very, very important when you're thinking about wines. These are ageable wines. These are only represent 1% of all the wines in the world. 99% of all wine should be consumed within five years. Actually, 90% of all wine should be consumed within one year. All wines around the world. So these are only, we're only talking about wines and then going through this whole exercise of tasting and smelling if there's a reason to do it. Uh, uh, and, uh, but most wines, again, are ready to drink when you buy them in the store. Don't go through this. Don't listen. To, don't watch this show <laughs> at all. It's a waste of your time. Exactly. But if you really want to see how it's done, you're going behind the scenes right now. You're going behind the scenes to see. This wine, to me, was stronger. Mm -hmm. And it was also more tannic. That's a word that we use. Absolutely. More astringency. And again, I said that astringency is the same thing in tea. Leave that tea bag in for a long period of time. That's what you can't be inside my mouth right now, but that's what I'm getting. Walnuts. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing I'm getting with walnuts. You eat walnuts during, especially during Thanksgiving. Right. Boom. There it is. I got that tannin on it. So right now, I got it. This is why I drank this wine the other night because mm -hmm. it was so more, it was much more accessible and easier to drink. And again, what's going to happen with this one? It's still tight right now. So even though they're both 2008s, I can drink this wine now because it's fruit friendly. This wine though will need time. So what happens? In time, maybe a year, two years, or three years, it's hedging your bets. Uh, what will happen is the tannins are going to drop out, that, that astringent part, that, that's natural. They're going to drop out. They actually turn into sediment and you'll see it down at the bottom. You'll sometimes, sometimes see sediment down here. And then um, the fruit also drops out. That's where the hedging the bets comes right. in. When is the fruit and the tannin going to be at your style? Acidity always remains the same. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So that was a, a wine for aging. This is mm -hmm. a wine for drinking. Yes. Yes. And, and like I said, this, this one, I, I, of the ones you did this morning, this was the one that I, actually, I think I liked the best. This was, I think, my second favorite of, of, of the 2008. So. Again, I could probably, um, you know, uh, drink this uh, with something light. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I have to have food with this. Oh yeah. You need, yeah, you need something heavier yeah. with this. Absolutely. I need. I couldn't drink this wine alone. I'll be very honest with you, and I'm, I'm sorry. You know, this is not like, not sense. You can't smell TV. Is that right. correct? This is no smell TV. <laughs> I haven't, I no haven't taste done TV. That I don't, yet, yeah. I, uh, you got to work on it. Man. <laughs> this could be it for you. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be it. Yeah. You no, know, then, <laughs> then you won't be able to talk to Mark because I'll have so much money. My mouth, though is um, dried out. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I actually, and I know this doesn't translate totally on, on TV, I don't have any saliva left. It's gone. It's just dry, it, it, all the tannins in the wine just grabbed anything that was there. And saliva is very, very important. We never, ne we never think about it, right? right? And some people have more saliva than others. Ask your dentist, they'll tell you. <laughs> and I'm yeah, not right. joking about that. They'll yeah. tell you whether you have a lot of saliva, a little saliva or a lot of saliva. and. Um, it's important, it actually breaks down, uh, it, the protein in the saliva breaks down flavor in right. food and in wine. So if you continually have dry mouth, 
it's not a very, very good thing. So what we're always looking for is something that's going to be balanced. So that wine is a little bit to me, not a little bit too too young yet. Right, right. All right, so let's let's, the last one. The last one because we're going to have to wrap things up here. Okay, I get paid by the minute, dude. I don't know if you know, <laughs> well, yeah, it's on, on their tab. Oh, it's on yeah. their tab. Yeah, no, no problem for me. <laughs> so now let, let's explain. This is again uh, uh, a wine we did not taste, uh, at least here in our professional. It's out here outside. Right. By the way, outside is out there, and you're not here, so you're not going to know what we're talking about. But there are 30 producers out there. Who usually have three wines, over 100 wines outside. This is a 2004. In 2004, well, you can actually smell a wine as it ages, and and, and the best example I can give uh, is the fall. And I got I'm from New York, so excuse me, but the fall, you know, around November, uh, um, a little bit after uh, Halloween. The, the the leaves are still there's still leaves on the trees and then fall and it's getting colder outside mm -hmm. you get a smell in the air right uh, some people even call it um, forest floor you're walking through a, a wet damp forest and that's actually what happens to older wines I mean we we have a wine here that's almost ten years old right hey yeah, I'm gonna put my hand over the top thank you for reminding uh -huh. me but, but you see. know what in this one I actually don't have to because now I'm getting mushrooms this s sounds so silly but. Mm -hmm. And um, it still has that earthiness right. and that earthy character to it as well. Uh, and this, uh, there's a lot of words in wine that probably don't make sense, but barnyard, yep. leather, uh, and these are wine. If you were ever to really listen to uh, uh, read a critic, you know when you, right. they, we're not writing anything down here, but if you read these uh, critiques that are in your local newspaper or in these wine publications, they'll, they'll actually use the same terms I'm using. That's right. And I also get a little of that meatiness, that earthiness, yeah. it's all there. It's all there. Right. And this so, was, like I told you, this is the wine when I, actually when I smelled it, right. I went wow, before I even tasted it. It's a style then that you yeah. like. And that's, so when I said that barnyard uh, earthiness kind of thing, keep that in mind, because right. that's when you go to the store, even for Mark, he's got to figure out what kind of wine does he like. Right, exactly. And a toast. Toast, right. again. You see what's happened though. 2004, being having of age, the tannins have dropped down. Now, actually, the, the major components in, in my mouth are fruit and acid. Yes, fruit and acidity. It's lively. The tannins, and actually, that's the problem. If too much tannin, it blocks the fruit out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, football. You got a blocker. Boom, tannin blocks out the fruit. But as the wine gets older, now I got to tell you something, and I only wish you could be here. This wine is now drinkable, especially after the last wine. Uh, it's really, really coming along. And again, this is only part of the 1% of wines that are going to age, uh, you know, uh, o over five years. Um, and this is a 10 year old bottle of wine. This is still, uh, it's drinkable right now, right. enjoyable right now, but it's also a wine that will age. And again, it's only your taste that's going to dictate that and, and your pocketbook as well. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and this was. This figure of wine was probably, uh, again, out there, probably the favorite, though there were at least four or five others that I tasted that were about equal to me on this. Uh, and there were some different, stylistically a little bit different, maybe not as much barnyard and earthiness, but um, there, was, there was a 94, no, 98, and I don't remember the producer, oh, 98, uh, I can't remember the producer. We had it during the, during the session, the same producer. Right. And I was going to pick that one, but then I decided I want to do this one. Right. So, well, um, looks like we need to wrap things up because I know okay. you've got stuff to get, to get uh, do Actually, after. I'll, I'll after tell you right, I'm gonna, I, just, I did two seminars, uh, and I'm going to go out and have beer right now, just yeah. so you know. It, well, that's, it, what, that's what wine people do, right? You know, there is some truth <laughs> to that. It's like a kid in a candy store. Right. I told you I tasted five or 6,000 wines a year. When we do professional wine tastings, I, by the way, this is nothing. I'm talking about yeah. we start at 7 o'clock in the morning and we do 100 wines a day. Right. Uh, and uh, you, you're, you're, uh, you actually can go into pain, mm -hmm. you know, you're, the acidity, all the tannins. Uh, and at the end of that, in all the professional wine tasters, it's dinner time right now. The last thing in the world they want is a glass of wine. Right. <laughs> Give me a nice cold beer. beer. Right. Exactly. Well, Kevin, I do really, okay. really, really appreciate you spending some time with me. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, folks, we're going to wrap this up. As always, uh, 
link, uh, hit the links above to friend me up. Uh, leave comments below. I'll have links to uh, all of Kevin's stuff. I'll have links to the consortium. I'll have links for all these wines. Um, so make sure you check that out and leave comments below. And uh, just again, thank you for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time. Awesome. Now, you can say salute. Yes, salute. It does work. Yes, we are Italian, Italian wines. today. Yeah. <laughs> today we're Italian. Exactly.